Simplifying the understanding of true and false positives slash negatives. The context around this will be snort, but this is just to help get an understanding about all of these uh, positives and negatives and trues and false coming all together. So a true positive is a correct result. So this is a disposition of malicious intent. So it's malicious and it did detect that outcome. Again, the result is malicious. It was alerted on and or action has been taken. Now a true negative, this as well as a correct result, but in this case, its disposition is non-malicious. So this is a benign file that's supposed to be benign. It's safe. It was identified correctly. There was no alerts and no action taken. So the way I like to look at it is true and false is either a correct or incorrect outcome. And then the disposition is either malicious or non-malicious. Now false positives. This is an incorrect result. The disposition is in fact non-malicious. So it's identified something as malicious and an alert and an action was taken. This is not the intended purpose. This may cause disruption in the organization because it's falsely blocking or alerting on things that it shouldn't be. Now, false negatives, these are bad. This is an incorrect result. The disposition is malicious, but it wasn't detected. The actual result, although malicious, there was no alert or action taken, so we didn't even know it took place. So let's put this in a little bit of context here. And when we look at true positives from the lens of snort, true positives occur when snort correctly identifies an intrusion event. Now the snort engine has identified the activity as malicious or unauthorized and has flagged an alert and applied a rule action. And the rule actions are over on the left side there that talks about you can disable, alert, block, you can rewrite, you can drop and reject. Now, example of that is snort detects and raises an alarm for an actual hacker trying to gain unauthorized access to a system or network. This results in a true positive disposition due to snort correctly identifying the intrusion. Now, false positives. So false positives occur when snort incorrectly identifies an intrusion attempt when the traffic itself is not malicious or unauthorized. Now this is an incorrect disposition and the results in an alert being triggered and or a rule action being applied. Now an example of this would be snort triggers an alarm for a legitimate user's login attempt because it incorrectly identified the attempt as an intrusion. This is considered a false positive. The user is authorized to access the system and is not accessing the system for nefarious reasons. So an incorrect result here. Now, true negative, a true negatives occur when Snort correctly classifies a normal authorized activity as benign. So Snort correctly filters out legitimate traffic and does not flag an alert or take action against that traffic. Now, an example of that is Snort correctly identifies that a user accessing a file or a website is in fact authorized to do so. And Snort does not create any alert or take any action against said traffic. Now, in this case, the user's activity is legitimate and Snort recognize it as such. So this is an expected outcome with normal traffic day in and day out. False negatives, well, they happen when Snort fails to identify an intrusion attempt or does not trigger an alert or take a rule action. Now, Snort incorrectly identifies a malicious or unauthorized activity with a disposition of benign. So an example of this is a hacker successfully bypasses snort intrusion detection slash prevention capabilities without snort triggering any alarms or taking any action to mitigate that threat. Now snort fails to detect this unauthorized access and considers the activity as normal. So you can see how this is bad. In this case, the intrusion attempt goes undetected, allowing the hacker to carry out their objectives. Now, this is the first part, just the level set a little bit around true and false, positives and negatives. I'm going to get into some things that we can do in the next video around how do we accommodate some of these false positives and false negatives. What should we do? Stay tuned for the next one.